What's up guys, Mike the Coder here. Today we're going to go over another problem in uh, CSES problem set. This is called permutations. So a permutation of integers of 1 to n is called beautiful if there are no adjacent elements whose difference is 1. So now given n, construct a perm beautiful permutation if a permutation exists. So um, what do they mean by this problem? Um, this problem is actually not that hard. And I'll explain to you guys what they mean by this. So essentially is is that uh let's take this example let's take this example okay so essentially is that um a permutation is like a set of uh, or an ordering of numbers from one n and uh, so essentially what that means is like if i have numbers one two three four five right this is a permutation right and the reason why it's a permutation is because all the numbers from 1 to 5 are in this permutation, right? Um, so like when n, is, when n is equal to 5, all the numbers from 1 to 5 are in here. So 1 to 5, right? They're all in here. So say, like, so this is a permutation. And an, another permutation that you could have, which is like another ordering of numbers from 1 to 5, would be like 3, 2, 1, 4, 5. And the reason why this is a permutation also is because all the numbers from one to five are in here, right? So like all the numbers one, two, three, four, five are in here, okay? So that's essentially what a permutation is. It's like an ordering of numbers, but all of them have to be there. So like five, 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 this is not a permutation of one to five, right? Because we don't have the numbers one to four, right? This this permutation, this, this ordering, only has like the only sing only single number of five, so the values of one to four are not in here, and we need to have all the values from one to five in order to have this as a permutation, right? So these two are permutations, okay? So now what they're saying is that a permutation is beautiful if there are no adjacent elements whose difference is one. So what that means is that let's say in this input that we have. Let's let's go back to this input. So our input here is four, two, five, three, one, right? And uh, if we were to take the difference between all these values, so if I take uh, two minus four, right? This would be like minus two, and then if I take the difference between five minus two, it would be three. And if I take a difference between um, three minus five, that would be minus two. If I take one minus three, it would be minus two. So all these differences between all these, right? Um, we don't see any of the any of them are equal to one, right? None of them are equal to one. So that's why it's beautiful. So this is beautiful, beautiful, right? Because none of them, none of these differences are equal to one, right? If you subtract any of these, we don't see any difference that equal is equal to one, right? None of them are equal to one. So this is a beautiful permutation. So now what the problem wants us is that given this number n, right, so given 5, we want to construct a beautiful permutation. So what we want to is we want to have an ordering of all the numbers from 1 to 5. And we have to make sure each of the adjacent differences are not 1. So all these num all these differences are not 1, right? All these differences are not 1, and that's what we want. We want to make sure that all the adjacent differences are not one. So how do you do this problem? Um, the easiest way to do this is uh, it's pretty easy. This is like the most basic way to do this. Um, what you could do is um, first you could create like an array of all your values. Let's say all the values here, right? Of size n of equal to five. So n is equal to five, right? So I create my values of n equal to five. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put all the even numbers first, and then I'll put all the odd numbers. So here I would have like 2, 4, right? That's the even number. Um, 6 is greater than 5, so I stop. And then I start back from 1 for the odd numbers, 1, 3, and then 5. And the reason why this works is because since the all the even numbers, right, all the even numbers, if I just print all the even, even numbers from least to greatest, um, their difference is always going to be... Uh, 2, right? 
So like if I do two, four minus two, this is gonna be two, right? Plus two, right? And if if we had more even numbers, let's say the n was equal to six, we'd have like another plus two, plus two, plus two, until we get down to like a number that's greater than n. So that would be like the even numbers, right? And then it's the same thing for the odd numbers. The odd numbers are always gonna be like, if we start from one here, plus two, it would be a plus two. The difference between here, three to five would be plus two also and so on and so forth. And uh, we know this will, this is true because uh, there's only one location where it's not plus two, and that's like the intersection when it's like going from even number and then to odd numbers. So in this case, it would be like one minus four, which is minus three. So no matter how many, like, no matter what, if, if, I, if we just have all the even numbers first and then all the odd numbers, all our differences here would never be one, right? So this would be a, per, a beautiful permutation. So the answer, what we need to do is just, we need to have, just print all the even numbers first and then print all the odd numbers. Okay. Now in the end, it, um, once we do that in our array, we also, we should also have a check value to check if any of the differences are equal to one, right? So if, if we do have a difference is equal to one, then we just print out, it's not possible because at that point, yeah, it's definitely not possible, right? But in this case, in this case, it is possible because all our differences are not equal to one, right? So that's good. So um, how does the code look like? I'll show you guys real quick. So just what you have to do is you have an index loop to the halfway point and just put it all the even numbers first and then put all the odd numbers. So to do that, I'll just show you guys right here. Um, it's not that hard. Let's go here. Okay, so like down here. Oh yeah, um, yeah. So here we we create we read in our value n, which is our number of the input, and then uh, let's skip for the first part for now. But um, yeah, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a array or a vector. In my case, it was vector, but you could use an array in Java um, of size n. Uh, it's going to be called D. Okay, so D is going to be the array that we're having. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a variable called start, and then I'm just going to print all the even numbers. So to do that, I'll just print two, right? So here I'm going to fill up my array to the halfway point of all the even numbers first, and then all the odd numbers afterwards. So filling up all the even numbers first, I just do J equals to zero, right? This is my index from J equals zero, and I go up to halfway point because there's only half even numbers and then half odd numbers, right? And I just do D of J is gonna equal to start, right? So start is equal to two, and it's gonna equal, to, that's just going to set each array value to equal to that. Then to ensure that it's an, an even number, I'm just gonna do start plus equal to two. So what this does is it's gonna have fill the array up to the halfway point of two, then four, then six, then eight, then 10, then 12, so on and so forth, okay? And I make sure it's I only go to the halfway point. So I stop halfway for all the even numbers. Then what I do is I set start now is gonna equal to one. And when start is equal to one, um, yeah, start is gonna equal to one. And I'm gonna uh, fill up all the odd numbers now. So to do that, I set J is equal to N over two now, because this is the ha second halfway point, right, that I'm looping through to fill up my array. So J is gonna equal to N over two which is the, the location where we stopped at, right? And then I'm gonna go to the end of the array. J is less than N, J plus plus. And then I'm gonna do D of J is gonna equal to start. So this is just filling up my array. And then I'm gonna do start plus equal to two. So it's gonna be one plus two, which is gonna be three. And then plus two would be five. So it'll be one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, 11, 13, so on and so forth. So that's gonna fill up all the odd numbers. Okay, so at the end, what we're going to have is we're going to have all the even numbers first to the halfway point and then all the odd numbers. So all the even numbers here, two, four, six, eight, whatever to the halfway point and then all the odd numbers. Okay. Um, now we're, what we're going to do is we need to check if it is possible. Okay. So for that, we're going to see if it is possible. So this is just the last test case in case there's any test scenario that is, uh, that makes it impossible. So for that, I created a function called find. And this is what the function does. The find is just going to subtract the, it's going to start from one and go to the end of the array. 
and I'm just going to subtract the current value from the previous value and get the absolute value okay and then if any of them is less than or equal to one or well yeah if any of them is less than or equal to one to be honest if any of them is like not equal to one well technically then it's false right because uh we don't want any of them to have adjacent values of uh i believe yeah any of the adjacent values are equal to one then it's not possible so if the absolute value of any of these are less than or equal to one we're going to return false okay otherwise we're going to return true so then w once after this checkpoint if it is true then we're just going to print out all the values in our array and otherwise we're just going to print no solution and that's the gist of the code that's all we need to do um so the f I, I realize in a few test cases um if n is equal to one which means that we just have one value it's always going to be one right because it's just going to be one so that's just like a simple case that you could do so it just returns zero yeah that's a simple case you could do um if n is equal to two or n is equal to three i realize there's no solution and the reason why for that is that um if you print out the even numbers for if n is equal to two and you print out the even and then the odd right if i print out the even numbers so if n is equal to two so let's say let's say n is equal to two and I print all the even numbers up to n and then all the odd numbers, it'll just be 2 and then 1. And then if you realize the difference between these two, it could never be possible, right? Because this will just be a plus 1 or a minus 1, right? Whatever whatever value you put here is always going to be plus 1 or minus 1. So, yeah, that's definitely not possible if n is equal to 2. It's the same thing if n is equal to 3, because if you have, like, I don't know, 2 print all the even numbers up to three so two then you can't print four because four would be greater than three then you have like one then three um sooner or later you're gonna have like a difference of one here because two minus one would be one or plus or minus one whatever way you subtract it so it's not possible here so that's why it's not possible if uh is equal to three but yeah that's the gist of it that's essentially if n is equal to three, it's also no solution. Um, if n is equal to two, it'll no solution. That is return. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's all that matters in this problem set. Rate, comment, subscribe. I'll check you guys later. Peace.